Many thanks to Joe Jaren, Daisy Podcast, Taggy Tag West, Black Knight, and Lion Loss for making this video possible. A dead player can give us a huge amount of info that can help us to track other players, such as the direction of a shooter, which stance they were in, how long ago they died, and whether the shooter is still in the area. So in this video, I'm going to help you to Sherlock a dead player in Daisy. In DayZ, there are 21 different animations for a player laying a mobile on the floor, 19 of which are death animations which can potentially tell us the direction of damage that caused death and which stance the now dead player was in. However, only two of the three stances can help us determine the direction of death, the standing stance and the crouched stance. Of these two, there are four different directions that can be deduced where damage is coming from, damage from the front, the right side of the player, the back and the left. It doesn't matter what caused the death dealing damage, a gunshot, grenade, getting run over by a car or getting hit by an infected. For example, if you're standing and you take deadly damage from the front, the dead player will always end up in this animation every single time. Bear in mind that it doesn't matter if they were moving when they got killed, were handcuffed, were shot in the foot or the head, it's all the same. In addition, female to male character animations are exactly the same, the models are just a little bit different. With that said, here are the four death animations of a standing player. Note that if the player dies of hunger, thirst, or any other state's effects that drains your health to zero, the death dealing damage will always be as if it's from the front, so you will lay on your back. So while you're standing, these are the four different animations that you'll get from death, and when you're crouched, these are the four different animations you can get too. As you can see, some of these are similar, but I will go over the differences later in this video. Now being in the third and final stance in Daisy, there are only two animations, death while being on the front and death while being on the back, which means directional death cannot be determined from being prone. There are some uncommon stances that you can be in when you die, such as the suicide group animation set, which won't tell you much as they killed themselves. Nonetheless, here are all seven suicide animations in Daisy for your viewing pleasure. When it comes to all seven of these, the stance they were in before death makes no difference, so it doesn't matter when they press the F11 key to suicide, only the method used determines the result of the death animation. While inside a vehicle, the death animation positions a player forward where the KO or unconscious animation positions them back in the seat and they're also moving too, so it's very easy to see when a player is dead or knocked out inside a vehicle. If you pull them out while they are dead, you will get this unique death animation with their legs being tucked up, but if you pull them out while they're unconscious, they will resume the default unconscious animation. Which brings us to the final animation group, the uncon or KO group. Now it doesn't matter which stance a player is in, they will always fall on their back while they're KO'd, even while handcuffed on their front. They will just roll over very awkwardly onto their back and resume the exact same position. So technically there is only one knockout animation with the handcuffed player being just a variant of the default animation. However, if you die while you're knocked out, you produce a unique death animation as shown here. And all three of these can be related with their leg positions. Now I'm not expecting anybody to remember all 21 different animations in Daisy. that would be ridiculous. So I've put them into groups based on the direction to identify them easier to where a player was killed from. First is the shot in the back group standing and crouched. The shooter position is indicated by this arrow. The only other animation which is similar is the prone laying on front death animation, which can be easily excluded by the arm position being much higher on the prone one and the legs having a sharp 90 degree angle in them on the prone stance. A player being shot from the front isn't easy to determine and probably will be the one that you come across the most because a lot of death animations leave you on your back. Fortunately though, the standing Standing and crouch death animation can be determined by the arm positions. If we pretend that there's a clock there, there's 6.15 for the standing animation and 7.15 for the crouch death animation. These two also have straight legs compared to others that have their arms outwards and the player is positioned on the back. Being shot from the right while standing is easy to determine because you will look like you've just been crucified in your death animation, which is standing while being shot from the right side, remembering that the shooter's position is in the direction of this red arrow here. Only one other animation looks like you're being crucified, which is the sharp one-handed melee weapon suicide, of which you will find a sharp one-handed weapon nearby anyway. Death from the right while crouched is a bit more difficult to know because it is very similar to the prone on your back death animation. However, luckily for us, dying on your back is very, very rare to come across in Daisy, but a difference can still be determined with the legs. If the bend in the leg is on the side the player is facing, it's death from the right side while being crouched. 
The killed from the left side group is much easier due to the standing one being the only animation close to a dab where both arms point in the same direction. The crouch death from the left side has both legs crunched up which is also very easy to determine which is only similar to two other animations. The two handed gun suicide which is easy to identify because you'll find a massive weapon next to the suicided player and the pulled from vehicle animation which is going to be very rare and both arms are also going to be by their side. For reference, here are all the animations that determine the direction of a shooter in the standing and crouch stance, with the shooter being in the direction of this red arrow. Now that you know about the direction a player died from and potentially how they died, there are two more features in Daisy that can help us to determine how long ago a person died and if the potential shooter is still in the area. The first is based on the decay of the skin of a player. If they were killed 0 to 10 minutes ago, their skin will be normal and there will be no flies, meaning they died very recently. Between 10 and 20 minutes, stage 1 decay will start with flies appearing above the body. However, 0 to 20 minutes after stage 1 has started, stage 2 decay will start somewhere between 0 and 20 minutes, showing extreme decay on the skin and the flies will also remain there. After death, a player's body will despawn in 30 to 60 minutes, but a player's body will never despawn if another player is within 125 meters of the dead body. This means if you randomly find a body with stage 2 decay, there is a very good chance that a player is within 125 meters of you. This can be better used with infected bodies because dead infected will despawn exactly 6 minutes after they're killed. Exactly. So if you find a dead infected that you didn't kill, someone is very nearby. Spooky. This also means if you're overwatching an area and you're more than 125 meters away from the infected corpse that you see on the floor and then you see it despawn, exactly 6 minutes ago someone was there killing that particular infected. So using dead player animations, decay stages and the despawn radius and timer of dead players we can determine the cause of death, direction of damage that caused the death, stance the victim was in just before they died and how long ago that they died, which technically means there is tracking in Daisy. we just need to be more well equipped with knowledge to track players more effectively and I'm sure over time more will be discovered to uncover the history of events that could very well lead to our downfall should we not be aware of them. So if you have any advice on understanding what happened in certain scenarios please do share your Sherlock Holmes skills in the comments. Now if you want to know the exact differences between a dead player and an unconscious player I've made this video just for you here but if you've already seen that one thank you very much for watching this one too and have a good day.